Well, Gravita, that's the stock in focus. The street is bullish on recycling industry. The stock has surged more than 90% in this year. In fact, Motilal Oswal, they've initiated coverage on the stock with a buy rating. To discuss this and more, we're joined by Mr. Naveen Sharma, the ED of the company. Hi, Mr. Sharma, good morning and good to see you, and as always. Well, give us a couple of basic numbers first. You know, there are a lot of triggers, a lot of industry tailwinds as well. What's the volume growth you're looking at for this year? And break it up for us, how much you're expecting in your core business, which is uh, your lead business and the non-lead business. Morning, Nigel. We are growing with a volume growth of almost 25% CAGR, and that will be a rolling average for next four to five years as well. While on the pad side, we are going at the rate of 35% CAGR. Currently, our lead business is almost 88% of the total which we plan to reduce in time to come to 70%. And we are also entering in rubber recycling, lithium battery recycling, and also increase volume in non-lead like aluminum recycling business. So altogether, we will keep continuing this rolling average of 25% CAGR volume growth in time to come. Mr. Sharma, from 88%, lead will come down to around 70%. By when? Because I recall you telling us steel and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, iron business. That will gradually come in, I think, in the next year itself. You know, that's uh, for FI 26, 27. So by when does it come down to 70%? Right. So it will be coming in next three years, the steel and paper business. But the other business, rubber recycling and volume growth, which is coming in aluminum business and lithium business, that will certainly reduce these number initially to... 80% and later, maybe third and fourth year, it will come down to 70%. Got it. All right. Uh, you know, uh, how big can the aluminum business scale up to, uh, uh, Mr. Sharma? You know, I ask you this because one of the triggers is aluminum alloy derivative is to be launched on the MCX. Explain to us how does this benefit uh, you? Maybe, uh, you know, the raw material you procure and then you can hedge it at the current price itself once this is launched. Explain to us what is the benefit and how big can the aluminum part of your business become? Right. So this aluminum business has an equal potential to grow like lead business. And when it comes to aluminum alloy derivative on MCX, this will certainly help in price discovery for auto sector. As of now, because auto sector uses secondary aluminum alloy only, 90% Demand from auto sector is of the secondary alloy. And most of the raw material is from import. So as of now, a recycler cannot has their material. Auto ancillaries or OEM cannot has their raw material supplies. So it will help three ways. Auto industry can has material. Recycler can has their raw material scrap, which they are mostly importing. And there will be price discovery as well. Because as of now, being a secondary material, there is no such price discovery and there is a various variations in the price. And one more interesting thing, Nigel, which is coming in this sector is EPR on non-ferrous metal. Government of India has announced that there will be a draft rule from April 25, wherein aluminum, copper and zinc, three metals will also come under EPR. So there will be a mandatory 5% non-recycling material content in the finished goods. So it will increase a demand of around 200,000 tons of aluminum from the secondary segment. So it will also give value addition for the secondary material as compared to primary materials. So altogether, I foresee that this segment will grow with the help of EPR on non-ferrous metal by hedging through MCX by launching this derivative of aluminum alloy. What is the capacity currently in the aluminum part of the business? 70,000 approximately, and you're expecting to increase it by multiple times. So where is it headed? So as of now, our capacity is around 40,000 tons, and we can certainly increase in no time because we have an in-house facility for adding capacity. We have our project division, so we can add it to 70 or 80,000 in two to three years based on the outcome which is coming by way of EPR and MCX derivative launch. Okay. Right. Mr. Sharma, hi. Morning. Uh, you know, the, uh, the markets, of course, have loved the story uh, of Gravita because stock is up, uh, stock has doubled uh, from May of 2000 and May of this year, basically in the last, what, uh, three months. It's, it's a doubler, so one of the best performers. Could, could you tell us, you know, just two basic questions for the uninitiated who have not really followed the stock that much. Uh, have, have there been specific regulatory changes which have kind of 
uh, driven a marked shift in, for you in, and, and acted as a tailwind. And second, what are, what are some of the risks since you are in the uh, recycling business, which is, of course, I mean, you know, what needs to be done, recycle and reuse. So these are big buzzwords around the globe. But are there any risks as well on the regulatory side as you see it? Go on, sir. Hi, Prashant. So basically, of late, there are various regulations which has come. Government has come with EPR, battery waste management rules have come. So lad business has grown multifold because of that. Parallelly, government has come on tire recycling policy, tire waste management rule, plastic waste management rule, oil waste management rule, and e-waste management rule. So all these rules have shifted a lot of which are we were telling always that this sector is informal sector to the extent of 65 to 70 percent. So there is a great shift from informal sector to formal sectors. So, and Ministry of uh, Environment has brought various regulations and they are also bringing, as I mentioned earlier, that they will bring the same regulations of EPR on non-ferrous metals. So it is altogether a sunrise sector. And with these regulations get implemented, EPR penalties or ECs are being implemented. It will grow multifold. So I do not foresee any such other uh, threat to this industry. Though uh, this is being a hazardous waste, so we being a technology provider also have as over other competitors because we have in-house technology and we are exporting our technology of recycling to various countries. So we do not foresee any threat to this sector and it will keep growing because of ESG requirements, sustainability and zero carbon regime which is coming in time to come. Okay, all right. Final question, sir. You know, we're running a little short on time, but help us out with a few details. What is the current consolidated EBITDA per ton? If you can help us out with that number. And what is should be the margin we should work with from here on? So, in rupee terms, it is 15 to 17 rupees a kg. And in percentage okay. terms, it is around 9 to 10 percent. 15 to 17 rupees per kg. Where is it headed? It, it, it will be headed with the growth of around 8 to 10 percent as we add to value added products further because as of now our web product is 42 percent which we plan to go to 50 percent in time to come all right uh, <clears throat> we'll uh, leave it there thank you very much uh, for joining us appreciate you uh, being here and uh, interesting business and you've got all the tailwinds going for you i mean you know the as they say the stars align and uh, they have a line uh, for your business, and it looks uh, pretty good. I mean, at least the uh, overall uh, argument that you can make for the business and the continued growth, I think, remains pretty solid. But stocks done very well. As I said, three months, stocks doubled.